Welcome, welcome. I'm Rob Ross Russell. I'm the Director of Studies in Medicine here at Pete House. Uh, I've got 30 minutes of your time along with my colleague here and we're going to give you some questions and quiz you a little bit, if that's all right. Have you come from far today? Where did you travel uh, from today? London, I took the train. So, ah, okay. Whereabouts in London? I'm uh, Middle East, so okay. up north. Exciting place, Middle East? Not really. If I'll go to visit Middle <laughs> East, what shall I go and visit? <laughs> I wouldn't be able to say really. <laughs> It's like a good, quiet place to study, I guess. Okay, perhaps I'll cross that off the list of where to go to. All right, okay. So I'm going to start off, if I may, with a case study. So I'm going to tell you a little bit of clinical information about a situation, and then we're going to run through a few questions about it. So we've got a, uh, a lady coming to see you. She's 42 years old. She's from the Sudan. She's a refugee, but she's been recently moved to the UK with her family. And she found a breast lump. So she's been to her GP and the GP has uh, sent her for a screening ultrasound uh, test and this has found a suspicious nodule that they think is uh, probably uh, cancerous and certainly need a biopsy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and she's come to see you in the surgery today. All right. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to start with is a difficult situation because she sits down and she says to you that she doesn't want to tell her husband about it. She feels that that uh, wouldn't work and she feels that she'd probably better not do the test and she'll just, because she doesn't feel she's able to talk to her husband about it. Mm -hmm. How might you approach that sort of a problem? I think I would first start by, start by empathising with the situation because it's genuinely a very difficult situation to be in. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I, I would talk through that with her a little bit, mm. and then I would, I guess she has every right to not go ahead with the test, okay. should she wish to, yeah. but I guess I would give her my professional advice that um, the prognostic outlook for uh, breast cancer is actually um, quite good these days. Mm -hmm. So. Um, should she choose to go through with um, a biopsy, um, there might be a good chance of uh, for her to continue her daily life after receiving treatment. Yeah. So I would make sure that she understands that okay. that not all is lost, even if she hears, um, even if the results come back um, the way that you would. You think it is okay. Yeah. So she may not have cancer, of course, which would be great, mm -hmm. but that doesn't make any difference if she doesn't go but you're right so mm -hmm. one thing to say to her is treatment uh, would be good mm -hmm. um, she says I can't afford to take time off at home I need to look after my husband um, uh, and the children and I can't possibly uh, spend time in hospital mm -hmm. um, I would I guess like then I would have access to some resources that I could recommend her because I definitely feel like there would be uh, institutions that she could get help from in that case I'm I think she could get help uh, at home help with uh, the kids um, so yeah I guess I would um, direct her to those resources to okay. s to help her understand that she would be well supported in a case like this that she wouldn't be on her own she okay. wouldn't have to face this alone there are several support groups at this stage would you do that sorry if we don't know that we don't know that yeah. We don't know the diagnosis yet. No, but the principle is, I think, I, I agree with you, I think the principle is absolutely right that we would want to try and uh, wind in support for her, but we might try to get to the point where we knew what was going on before we, 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 we did that. Okay. Is there anything else that you might want to explore about this situation? Mm. I guess the primary thing to explore would be to get to maybe the root of her concern to understand the actual, I guess, reason why she doesn't want to find out the result of the diagnosis and to make sure that we can like, eliminate those fears. Um, okay, so um, I'm now going to move somewhere completely different. I want to show you a picture, if I may. So I'm just going to uh, show you this graph. Okay, so take your time and have a look at it. Mm -hmm. It's uh, what we call a growth chart. 
Um, and before you look at the data, can you just explain to me what you're looking at in terms of the graph itself? Mm -hmm. So um, we have stored needs, you can see the months, which and the weight and the height. And I guess based on those ranges, I would guess that this would be a chart from your point of view, or okay. like I guess their progress throughout the months, the progress okay. of their height and weight as they develop up until the third year. Yeah. So I'm going to explain a, a bit more about it. So this is a weight chart showing normal weight and normal height for children between the age of 0 and 36 months. Mm -hmm. the, the, the distribution of, of normal weight is across here. So the 50th is the 50th centile, and that means the average weight of a person, person at any particular mm -hmm. age is shown by the central line. But the third percentile, in other words, 3% of children are below the bottom line, 3% of children are above the top line. So this is the range of normal growth. Mm -hmm. And similarly for height. So you can see that the height changes with time. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. This particular person has got dots that fall well outside um, both the height and the weight, but let's mm -hmm. just concentrate on the weight. So what do you think is happening with this child? And how would you describe what happens to those dots? As you said, they're well below the norm. Yes. Mm, and that makes me think of maybe a premature baby, like the weight's less and the height's less. Okay, so you're quite right that prematurity would, would move things, but this is, this is a child who is correct for that age. In other words, it was a term child, and they mm -hmm. started quite small, I agree, mm -hmm. but they weren't preterm. Okay. Um, and then let's see, so at 24 months, and the child's at 12 kilograms, which is now at Correct. Well, within the normal range. Yeah. So what's happened? Um, I guess, could there be some sort of other developmental abnormality, even if the child uh, is not premature? So yes, so some children are very small, so there are plenty of chromosomal abnormalities that make you grow badly. So it could be that, but as you say, doesn't quite work because the child is now back inside the normal range here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what what's happened? Not specifically, but in general terms, what's happened where that arrow is? Okay. Okay. So I guess at birth. So what from what I can infer, I'm not quite sure what the answer is, but from what I can infer, the child falls within a healthy range in the beginning and at the end of the dots, Correct. like at age two. So there was just something in between, Correct. and the arrow is at roughly 12 months. So there was something from birth up until around year one that um, negatively affected the baby's development. Good. But then there was a, sort of a rapid recovery period, especially from 18 months onwards until okay. 24 months. So what, what sorts of things, in general terms, might have happened at that stage? Um, I guess... I guess if there was maybe some malnourishment or if the baby Good. wasn't well looked after. Good, yes. In fact, that is a case of neglect. So that was that was anything else that might do that that is quite rather less distressing, if you like. There could be some sort of other disruptions maybe during pregnancy that wasn't immediately uh, visible at birth, but that later affected the baby's development. Um. Yes and no. I mean, what might have happened is that there was a condition that got treated mm. at that point. Mm. So if we treated a condition, what sorts of things might we have done at that stage? Do you know of any diseases, for example, that affect mm. growth and absorption and nutrition? Um, I think I've heard of it, but I can't quite it remember. It's actually fun. There's something called celiac disease, for example, and oh. celiac disease is a gluten intolerance. Mm -hmm. We might have taken gluten out of the diet. Yeah. The child might have had a heart defect. We might have operated on it. Yeah. You know, there's there's a number of explanations, but the key thing is is the growth. Mm -hmm. All right. No, thank you very much indeed. That was really kind. We will be in touch with you in January to let you know how things are.